We pray that Spirit Divine come and take absolute control over everything that we are coming to do here from the beginning to the close of the program. We pray that every objective that has been set for this program, let it be achieved in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. This and many more blessings we ask through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much, Anita. Once again, you are welcome to the new examination center of the University of Cape Coast. This is a one-day orientation to prepare you towards what is expected of you as national service persons in the coming year. For this morning session, we have students from the College of Humanities and Legal Studies and students from the College of Health and Allied Sciences. For our afternoon session, which will start at 12 o'clock, we are expecting students from the College of Education Studies and students from the College of Agriculture and Natural Sciences. You are also informed that this event is being broadcast live on TV UCC, on Facebook and YouTube. And the manager says that I should inform you that you should go to their page and follow and like them as well. So with us this morning to take us through our orientation, we have we are very much fortunate to have a team from the National Service Secretariat to take us through our orientation. We have Madame Linda Obimpo, Metro Manager, Cape Coast Metro National Service Secretariat in our midst. <laughs> Mr. Ennis Adansi is the Regional MIS Manager at the National Service Secretariat. Mr. Benjamin Bainin is the Regional Accountant at the National Service Secretariat. <laughs> Mr. Kobnai Kings is the Assistant Regional Administrator at the National Se Secretariat. <laughs> Mr. Alex Opokumensa is the Regional Director at the National Service Secretariat, Central Regional Branch. We will have another team who will join us very soon. Once they are in, they will be duly acknowledged. We'll move on to invite our regional director in the person of Mr. Alex Opokumensa to give us a welcome address. Shall we invite him with a round of applause? Thank you very much, madam. A very good morning to you all. Let me begin by first... by first thanking the organizers of this event. Although quite a good number of you were late. Because per our time, we were supposed to start at nine. <laughs> and we have two sessions. And that of the second session is to begin 12. So now we have taken an hour of our period but that notwithstanding, we shall do everything within our possible best to impact to you what we are supposed to do. Yes, for national service, it is our mandate to visit all tertiary institutions, of course, which are accredited like yours, to take you through the activities and the mandate of national service, especially the do's and don'ts, so that as you join us, you not fumble, and then you know you are left from right. This morning, or this session, we are going to give you three presentations. One will be the general overview of national service as to how it started, the do's and don'ts, the laws governing it, and what are few. And that session is very important because, Madam, as you are aware, once the national service is man, uh, mandatory, if you don't have the certificate, the national service certificate, per the law, there is no way you can do any work, even your own private work, you can't. So, yes. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> that is, if you complete university, if you complete university and you set up your own firm, once there is a record that we have completed university, 
and you didn't do national service. Pay the law. You can't operate. Why? That is the law. <laughs> so please, when we are doing presentation about the general overview, we have to listen to us attentively because most companies, being it public or private, they usually do interview. And the moment they see that you are a graduate or you have completed university, these are the questions they ask you relating to national service. Then we shall take you through to how we register online so that you can be posted. And when you are posted and you are doing the national service too, we have to be paid so the accountant will uh, take you through. But whilst I'm doing the presentation, I'm happy to announce to you the presence of our indefatigable, our indefatigable deputy executive director, very affable, but very respectful to. That is Dr. Gifty. So I, I will do the proper introduction of her. She's the one going to take us through the general overview. So when it is time, she will come and I will introduce her properly. And that is how we do. Usually when it is Cape Coast and other quote-unquote big universities, our leadership from the headquarters join us and do their presentation. I will entreat you to listen to us attentively. Opportunity will be given to you to ask any question related to national service. So that by the time we depart or we dissolve from here, you will be much abreast with time as how national service runs its activities. So once again, I'm happy for the number we are seeing. I'm told that by the time we leave here, this side too will be filled. But let me advise you, as potential leaders of this country, let us be time conscious. That statement of African punctuality, who does not exist in any lesser come, is not good. So Madam, on that note, I think we need to relax a bit. Okay, so I want to use this opportunity to invite the first speaker. As I've told you, he's going to speak about the general overview of national service, how it came to be, the laws governing it, and the do's and don'ts. And that presentation usually is done by the regional director but who is the regional director when the deputy executive director is present? So today we have this opportunity to invite our deputy executive director, who is also ESCO member of Ghana Football Association <laughs> and the owner of uh, so, so many clubs. My brothers, let's invite Dr. Gifty Oware. Doc, you are welcome. Hello. Oh. Hello. Oh. Hello. Be nice towards me. Oh. If you are not nice towards me when you start your service, your payment will delay. Oh. I think th this happened to be my eighth session for the last eight years. Wow. And coming to UCC is always a pleasure. But you know, I, I was telling my PA when we were about to get here that I got my first book he had from someone from UCC. You know, you know, you know when you are a very young girl, very innocent, and you are just a senior high school graduate, and this boy was a university boy. Oh. And he came to school, he got a girlfriend in the university. Before I knew, he left me. Oh. He didn't try at all. I had a, 
Kwame. Oh. By now, you people can make us say my husband is a UCC boy. Oh, yes, I know, Mammy Kowai. School, I'm in for myself. University of Ghana. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are very grateful for the way UCC always receives us, your reaction towards us, and how you come forth when we have to. I'm a very fast speech maker. Unfortunately, I teach history at KNUSC. So sometimes when I'm teaching, I will forget that I still have students because the lecture that taught me told me to be looking at the ceiling at the end. So please bear with me. And when we are done, whatever questions you have, feel free to ask them. We love it when it's very coordinated because this is the only chance you get at the first shot of being a student before you become a national service personnel. And this meeting is very key because almost all of us went through this process. And if you do not appreciate what this is about, you would end up finding yourself wanting for the one year you'll be doing your service. So I beg you, please give us all the necessary attention. We'll make sure it's less than an hour so all of us can be able to go back to our various duties. Can I have the slide? So national service, as you all have heard, is called the national service scheme. A lot of people call us the national service secretariat. The reason is because the office we are in is called the secretariat. So when you call us the NSS and you think it is secretariat, it is fine. But the real name of the agency is called the national service scheme. Very soon, if all things work out as we are planning, we may become an authority, which means that we are going to move from being an NSS to NSA. There is an already NSA there, which is the National Sports Authority, National Security Authority, and other NSS, NSAs. But for us, we are going to be the National Service Authority. The authority just means that we are going to expand more, and maybe we may end up starting to post people to the mortuaries. But for now, <laughs> but, but who, who told you? Who told you we don't post people to the mortuary now? We do. Why don't we post people to the hospitals? Is, us, is the mortuary not part of the hospital? So we still post people to the mortuary. Can I have the slide? The National Service Scheme, like I said, is supposed to be done by all of us Ghanaians, whether living in Ghana or abroad, whether I went to school in Birmingham or in Brunel, whether I went to school in Florida, as far as I'm Ghanaian, 18 years and above. So somebody would ask, will I have to do service if I'm 16 years and I completed school? My school, KNUST, provided someone. We produced one guy who was 15 when he completed university. He had to wait for the next three years to do it. So when I took over at the deputy boss of national service, the young man had just completed school. He had to wait till in 2019 and then before he could join to do. So naturally, national service can only be done by someone who is 18 years and above. People have been asking us, they see 18 years to 40 years. What does that mean? What it means is, if I am 40 years, I can decide to seek for an exemption from national service. But it's not an automation. When you seek for the exemption, the board will have to sit on it, and the board will decide if they want to give you the exemption or not. So national service is supposed to be done by anybody 18 years and above. Number two, as far as you are from a tertiary, and when I talk of tertiary, I mean any course that is two years and above. So if you do DBS, you cannot do national service. So from the high diploma and above, you can do national service. Note, most of us here had done diplomas at various institutions. 
before we got here to do degree. If you also get here after doing one national service on the diploma, you are not supposed to do another national service on the degree. National service is done once in a lifetime. So if I've done national service before, I cannot do national service again. So national service is done tied to the individual, not to the many courses that you decide to do. Are we good? Like I said, it's for Ghanaians. So as far as you're Ghanaian, you are supposed to. 18 years and above is there. And then one beautiful thing the national service say is that you must be of sound mind. What we say when we mean the sound mind thought is saying that you must be someone who can think and think straight. You cannot be someone. You know it's funny, eh? But in reality, many a times we sit at the office and we have people who are bipolar. And then somebody says, I'm working with her. I'm working with him. I don't know what happens. Any minute she's getting a meltdown. Even when you are asking her to do a job. So we are worried. Can she stop? If a doctor assess you and tell us that whatever sickness you are suffering from can be a threat to another fellow, we would have to let you stop national service. But you cannot just come and say in the morning that, oh, me, I think I'm bipolar gifty. So can I just go? No, we don't do that. Our arts, our national service commenced from 1973. It was a decree by the Champon administration. If I talk of the Champon administration, all of us here do not know, even including myself. Only few people sitting up here knows about it, and maybe some one or two people around here. But the Champon decreed that people were asked to go and do national service by force. Every grad, they went to various institutions. Those times, your school wasn't called UCC. Your school was just producing teachers. They came and said, all of you, come and make sure you are doing something. But the girls here used to put on short skirts. And it was a punishment of making all of us active and doing something back to the society. But in 1980, we got what we called an act by a civilian government. This Act 426 is the act we had been using. It had gone through some few additions, some few amendments. But as you and I are speaking, we are about to enter Parliament again for the Act to be reviewed entirely. Because in this Act, there is some bit of it that says that the National Service personnel must just be in a Ghanaian, which means that whether you go to school or not, you can do service. But then in, 2000, in 1996, it was changed to say that it was only for us graduates. So there is going to be a new act. It's very possible you may be the one working under that act. Can we move? Deployment for employment. This is brothel. What's it will deploy for employment? What that just means is that when we send you out there, for you to do your service, we consider you first. That when we are done with all the process of deployment, we know that you should be able to get employment after your one year with us. So in our quest to deploy you, you most of you here are doing BEAT, yeah? A lot of the courses you are doing, you are adding the education to it. But there is someone also at KNUSC who is also doing history like I did first degree, but they didn't add education to me. And fast forward, I didn't know I was going to end up being a lecturer. So to save this, also, this person also, at this point, as you and I are speaking, we have introduced something we call the pedagogy. And this pedagogy would help this person. All of you here know pedagogy. Oh? Oh, you don't know pedagogy? Oh. They said they don't know. Okay, so the pedagogy process is just the training of me, a non-teacher, to be able to appreciate the teaching skills and the proper formula of teaching. So we've introduced that within the one year I am doing service, if I have the flair of wanting to be a teacher, I am also given that opportunity. So by the time I am done with my service, I still have a certificate that qualifies me just as you, the BA, through national service, deployment for employment. Now we mobilize. When I say mobilization, is you, the people sitting here. 
and we deploy you and what deployment means is what you call the posting now we will post you to the places that you are supposed to be can i can we move the vision and mission i don't think you need all of this please some of these things you will see them every day we all know why we are Ghanaians. we all know we are supposed to be nationalistic or we are supposed to be patriotic or we don't know okay so as Ghanaian as i am and we the Ghanaian gathered here we are supposed to be patriotic why you're supposed to learn how to sing Yenarai Asasini and know how to sing the national anthem and then be able to recite the national pledge so when they say recite the national pledge you will not sing the national anthem national service is 12 months when I say 12 months what it means is the whole cliche on the streets that oh national service starts from January and by the time you are in July you've done six months so you can stop it's a lie when I was a student they told me to I don't know who spread it but it's all over the place but the truth is national service is 12 months whichever month you start it would end at the other months in the next year so if for instance this year we are starting in September I don't want to say we are starting in September. It's possible we'll come in. If we are starting in September, then we are going to end the next year. 10 months. Sorry, 12 months. Now, between those 12 months, there is the last month which should have ended the year. If it was January, it was going to end in December. Now, in November, you go for a permanent... What do you call it? Hey, you very well. A terminal leave... That is supposed to be your right and not my privilege. So at any point, when you are done with your 11 months, you have a one-month terminal leave, and that terminal leave precedes your completion of national service. Are we good? So if you start in September, you will complete in July, and August will become your terminal leave. Great. And in the terminal leave too, you are supposed to be paid. So national service will have to pay all the people in the public sector, whilst the private sector people will also have to pay the people in the private sector. Organizational philosophy, these are the things they have written, the national programs, the things they have written, the sector ministry, the things they have written. Can you all see? Good. So, no, no, please go back. These are just talking about the organizational philosophy, just talking about the skills, the relevance of national service, and the essence of the national service you do. Let me just give you three essence of national service. On any day, if you want a scholarship in this country, and you have not done your service, and you want to get any scholarship without a service certificate, they will not give you. And it's law. Get fund, scholarship criteria, GMPC, then, then, all of the rest of them, including the Cocoa Board one. So you need a national service certificate to get it. If you are also looking for employment by government, and you say you are an HND or a degree holder, you are supposed to provide your national service certificate, it being civil or public service. Without it, you will not be employed. And unfortunately, you know way back when it was not digitized, what people used to do was to come to our office and they'll come and beg the people and cry and be rolling on the floor. So some of our staff who are also very, very sweet and they have empathy, will not like me, will just say, oh, okay, you let me fake one for you to go and get the employment. Now, if you want to check my national service certificate, all you need to do is to go on our portal, put my name, give to your worry. If you know my other send, if you would have been able to see my certificate, then it will pop up. So we cannot fake a national service certificate for anybody. If anybody tries to fake it for you, when you go back to your workplace, you'll be sacked, because that's a crime. National programs are the places we are posting people to. So this, this is it. Now, we post people to both private and public. We call one the subvented, and we call one the non-subvented. In our parlance, when we say subvented, all we are saying is companies that derive their money from government COFEX. Non subvented, any agency that do not take anything from government. It could belong to government, 
but do not derive directly from garment. For instance, when we're talking about airports, cocoa board, for instance, snets, we are talking about the no GMPC is with government now. So let's say electricity, petroleum commission. They don't belong to individuals, but they don't also derive their direct source from government. They run on their own through the SEGA system. Now, not subvented, one of it is all the other private agencies you see, including the MTNs, the te tell you what? What? My husband is Asante, so I'm very careful when I'm pronouncing that way. It's tell you what? That word. And the Etel Tigo. Do we still have Etel Tigo in the country? We still have Etel Tigo? They are called what? AT. Yeah, right. So the AT. But we don't have Kasapa again. So Kasapa can't post you. But all, the, all of them, including the banks we know, are. Somebody asked me, so are the NGOs like the UN, you know, those UNESCO, the Danida, the GIZs, are they also non subvented? When you are, national service will pay you the 717. So when you go to these places, you'll be paid by us. I'll say, oh. But when, when, you know when these agencies are working, they work under ministries. So the ministry they are working under, which is foreign affairs or education or any of the other ministries, they are the ones that must pay. And we pay for the ministries. So we have to pay you. Then, okay, I've, I've spoken about the sector. And also anything that the board prescribes. So if today the board decides that this room is too hot, so they want all of us to begin to set up air conditions here. Today, National Service will create a model that says the air conditioning model. The board has the right to also create models. So models that the board has created, one of it is the planting for food and jobs, rain for food and jobs. The board has created the traffic management. So you see sometimes if you are in Accra especially, you see those young men and women in the National Service thing, they are there and they are directing traffic nicely. You know, hello, hello, you know, whilst I said it, it looked funny, huh? but let me tell you a joke, which really is the reality. We have a quota with the Ghana police service that these young men and women who only go to work sometimes at 6 a.m. and they close exactly 10 a.m. because there is no traffic after 10 and they go to their various homes to rest. They are the people that are first looked at because they have an intensive two months training on how to do the job of the traffic warden and policing. So people who get the fortunate point of being there at least know that there is a possibility of becoming a police. And they are degree holders, don't forget. So they don't start as lance corporates. Can we move? Steady leave. I already spoke about study leave, you remember? Oh, no, I didn't speak about study leave. I spoke about terminal leave. Study leave. Study leave in our parlance doesn't mean that when you were coming to, because some of us are on study leave here. It doesn't mean when you were coming to do your course, your agency gave you study leave. No. What it means is that me, I have, I am doing, I'm going to school. Are you listening to me? I work somewhere else, but I'm doing continuation of my school. Now, when, for instance, let's say I'm a, I'm a teacher at Christ the King. Now, at Christ the King, which is a government institution, I'm paid by government because it's a Catholic school. Now, as I'm being paid by government, I had done just the set A. I decided to come and do a degree. Now, when I am going back to do my service, I only have to state that I am on steady leave because I'm already working. So national service will post me back to Christ the King and not post me somewhere else, which is not supposed to be the place. Are we good? So steady leave at national service doesn't mean I took leave and I came to school. What it is saying is that I was already a worker 
and I had to break into my work to come back to school. So when I am done, post me back to where I was working. Are we good? This study leave people pay some little quota, not through you, but through the agency to get a national service scheme. Health conditions. That's things that can stop you from doing national service. If you buy foul or fair means decide to get pregnant and in this pregnancy you are told that there is a problem okay and you are told that there is a problem in the with a pregnancy one you can write officially to us and we'll work around it. And then make sure that we are posting you close to where the pregnancy happened. So you will be with that man who got you pregnant. <laughs> now, <laughs> why? You don't want a man to suffer too. Can I, can I see what, what you, you said out again? Now, if by any reason, for instance, I am, I am afraid of heights. So me, when I'm on the third floor, 15th floor, 13th floor, even when I'm on the national service floor, you are not very careful, and you push me, I'll fall, because already I have a scare. That cannot be determined by a doctor. But if you have any other thing like asthma, like pneumonia, something that prevents you from going into any environment, you are supposed to state it whilst you are registering. Now, when you state it, like it is said, you are supposed to give us proof. So I say me, I have hepatitis. I'm supposed to be able to say that this is my certificate that says I have hepatitis. You cannot say you have epi and then you are lying. You cannot say you have, let's say, cephalus, where we know that it's supposed to be in your pants and you are pretending that you come and let all of us get cephalus. Who we'll mind you? But diseases that affect you in terms of work, when you are writing to us, you're supposed to. If you have any disability, it's also there for you to say, see, I'm. I have some disability form and you have to look at it whilst you post me. Then also we look at the choices of your region. There are always three choices you are supposed to select. Me, if it was me, who had the digital system I was selecting, I would have selected greater Accra, greater Accra, greater Accra. But unfortunately, National Service doesn't allow you to do that. You can select the regions you want. The onus is on us when we go for our posting conference to post you to wherever we want to post you. So what you are supposed to do is genuinely select the regions you, you know, if you were posted to, you will be comfortable. Because the first reason for your posting will be we'll check where your domicile is. Domicile means where you are living. Can we move? No, no, I just saw national service is not obliged. I want to... Oh, okay. Like what I just said. National service is not obliged to post personnel to their preferred regional user agency. So they decide where they want to post you. You don't decide. Can we move? This is the act. This is the job creation and other things. So these are the things I was I had been speaking about. I've already spoken about the 40 years, you remember? Please, the 40, the 40. Then they paid before this one. No. Okay, this one. You remember I spoke about the 40 years? Good. Now, the 40 years, this is a rule. I am 40 and I got my first degree or my HND. I'm not supposed to do service, but like I said, the onus is not just on you. You can decide to apply. When you are done with the process, the board is the only people that can say won't do because you are supposed to apply for exemption. And exemption, the board sit on it as they are having a board meeting to say, these people have asked us for exemptions. We think that, let's say somebody has done a course in, I want one that we need so much, lab tech. The lab techs are very few. For instance, anesthetists, they are very few. So if I'm 40 years and I go to do it, the board will say you must do your service. So there are few courses that the board are very, very active on. But like the one you and I have done, <laughs> but the one you and I, <laughs> Hello? Hello? <laughs> but, but, hold on, hold on. Why are you guys?
guys murmuring. See, we, we all have done courses that uh, there is no way the board will say we should not do. <laughs> well, are we not humanities people? Who ask a humanities person not to do service? They will let us do the service. Don't worry. So can we go back to it? Like, like I said, H you know, done HND, proud to service, you are exempted. Two years, done two years non-degree course, you are exempted. You know, these were the things I was telling you. So one, DBS people cannot do service. Two, if you have done HND and you did your service, you won't do a service again when you are doing degree. Proven ill health. No, you can go. Proven ill health, I've already spoken about it. Approved postgraduate studies. Now, this is it. A lot of us, when we are done with our first degree, for instance, let's say you were the top of the class and you got a scholarship and you have to go back to school right after the first degree. You are supposed to officially write to national service for deferment. The word I said was deferment. Now, if you do not write to us for the deferment, because see, if you write to national service for deferment and you come back, this is the advantage. And you are supposed to get a job just after you, you came. National service will not force you to have to do the service because you wrote a deferment with us. And it will rather be a privilege for us to get you on and rather post you to wherever you are, you've gotten the job with. And we'll give you an attestation. Now, if you do not do this and you decide to go yourself, when you come back, we'll let you do the service. But you have no bearing with us. If you do not defer, quite a lot of people say, oh, me, I got the masters. I have to just rush and do it. You can rush and do it. Well, you can also rush you through. Yeah, it happens. Like I said, I've done this thing eight years. So I've been ruthless for seven years. I've been nice the last one year. You know, it's getting close to election, so I have to pretend to be nice. <laughs> Hello. So, if you have any examination, if you have any examination to reset, my brothers and sisters here, if you are going to reset an exams, national service is saying you are supposed to defer. Hmm. So somebody asks me, am I supposed to defer when the course, when I just have one paper to write? If you don't, then they catch you. It's a crime. But you know, there is something that my husband keeps saying. My dad also said the same. Because both my dad and my husband are lawyers. It's only the one that has been caught who is a thief. Don't ask me to explain. No. I'm just saying, you are supposed to finish school before you do service. But if by any reason you did not pass all your exams, it means you are not done with school. So you are supposed to write it and come and do service. But like my husband and my father had said, it's until I am caught, I am not a thief. Are we good? I didn't say anything. Offenses. These are offenses. Um, I, I am quite glad that we are amending our act. I find some of the offenses very, very, you know? Really. Evasion. The evasion, they say, it means that you did not even report to where you were posted. Some of you are very stubborn. You've been asked to come to my house to do your service. When you got to my junction, you said my house was too far, and you decided to leave. You didn't come. It's a crime. When they catch you, national service will deal with you. And this one, you see, no, let me tell you something. Something I was told when I was young, and it happened, because I lived in the university campus after some time, when I was young at Ken USD. Those times, they used to come to campus. And you know, we've all come to school. <laughs> Hello. 
It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, you people, why? You are making the guy feel bad. So, you know, they used to come to campus. When you are, those times used to be A-level, and when you are done with first degree, they will come to campus. If you are an A-level person, who didn't do your service? Before you go to second year, they will bring a long bus, and they will carry all of them to go and do service. So these are some of the reasons why we have these kind of laws. And I think that they've outlived it because really I can stay on social media and make you feel I'm here. So we are amending the act. When we amend, these things will change. Can we, can we go on? Then, how do you pronounce that word? Say it again. The what? Decession. Ah, uh, sir. Okay. Since you say it's decession, I'll also say decession. Because that's not how I was going to pronounce it. So you say it's decession. So when you decide to dissert, the <laughs> de what? The what? Ah. It means that you did not complete. Like I said, the six months people have been doing. Those who do the six months, six months. Omu ye, trotro kakra, aloma kwa ye, trotro kakra. You will not be given a certificate, and it's also an offense. Then self-posting, which is the one a lot of us will do when we are doing our service. This is what we do. Me, in my mind, when I was doing, after first degree, I wanted to go and do my service at MTN. MTN brought a letter to national service for me to do my service. Hmm. The sad story. When they brought it, me, I knew I had been posted to Nasha, the empty to go and do my service. Then KNUST also sent a list to say I should do my service on campus. We look at the education sector first. So they posted me to education sector and they logged it. MTN keeps sending them letters. They say, no, you won't post you. So me, I want to do my service at MTN and become a very bougie, you know. And these people to have sent me to Go and be holding. <laughs> and that's what they did to me. But you see, when if, if I did not go to, oh, why are you looking at them? They are just one of us. They are only late. <laughs> the only crime is today they are late. You is fine. Oh, you are welcome, madams. Now, what happened is that when you post yourself to a place you want and it's not in the national service system, you will not be given a certificate because we don't know where you posted yourself. The only place we will post you is where you are supposed to go do your service. So people who go and do their service are seventh month. Then they will come. Madam, you see, me, when I saw it the first time, it was at this place, and that is why I went to do my service. You are lying. We have a back end. We'll go and show to you where we posted you to. So don't do it. And we are not going to repost you. Because on that one, like I said, is a crime. That you have decided to post yourself to a place you are not supposed to be. Are we good? Absenteeism. Some of you don't like going for lectures. And you travel with this life into national service. When you do not go to work, ask the director here. They will write a letter to us and tell us that you are very, very, very absent. And you're not coming to work, so you have to stay at home. And we'll also write officially to you and tell you, can you please stay at home? And then restart your service the next year. And you have to do it again and again till you are calm. And you learn how to go to work. Lobbying. You know? Oh, gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> but wait, oh, why are they making only women come here? <laughs> You know, it's because the usher is a man. <laughs> you know, because the usher is a man, 
He keep bringing the women. Oh, boss, do you want to come and sit here? You are fine. Uh -huh. I was going to give you my seat. All right, so lobbying. The job I do, which is politics, allow me to be able to lobby for whatever I want. But a national service, it's a crime. This is the reason. In your quest to want to lobby for a place, you can be put to danger. One, if you're a beautiful guy here and very handsome, and you come to me and you say you want me, you're coming to lobby me to post you. If my bad mind comes and I decide to give you a kiss, it's a crime. Now, I use myself because if I had used the men, all of you would have been fain, fain. Now, if a woman decides to also go to any of the national service people, and because you are a student and you are vulnerable, we decide to post you and we say that, oh, can we have... That one too is a crime. So, you are not supposed to lobby me. You are not supposed to lobby any of the people here. That is why when we are done, you will never be able to get our numbers. And we walk out of here, and we'll talk to you, and we'll go to our house. Are we good? So don't lobby us whilst we don't lobby you. Enrollment. Enrollment will be done by one of our staff, the IT system. So I'll set the www.nss.gov.gh so much that sometimes when I want to type something, before I know, I'll start typing nss.gov.gh. Now, NSS and everything that we do is digital. Sadly, when I was doing my service in 2010, it was not. I remember very well going to KNUST, the humanities. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> hey, hey, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hey, see? Oh, Alright, so So hold on, hold on, guys. So in 2010, when I had to do my service, I had to go to the faculty who were about, let's say, 3,000 or 4,000. That time, we were not so many like today. About 3,000 people completing school or 2,000. And my name is Owari. So you can imagine where my name would have been. And I had to see this short woman. That I was even slimmer. <laughs> and I'm looking for my name. Do you know it took me almost two weeks? No joke. Anytime I say it, I have goosebumps because people don't understand where we've come from. See, it took me full two weeks because me, when I sleep, I don't like, I sleep very late. I don't like to wake up very early. Anytime I'll come to the faculty, there will be people there. And now I have to go and write my NSS number. And it's, it's pasted. And those times, that's how, that's the only way you can get your NSS number. And when you go, you have to be looking for your name and write it too. So this thing had been in the process for so long that way back, all of you here would have to go to your faculty and be checking your name on the list. So we've moved from these processes into becoming a digital space. So if not for anything, when we talk of digitization, no joke. I understand. Because like I said, I've gone through it. Now, when we were posted, let me tell you something that happened. You will not be sent the post into your phone. No. You would have to go back to your school. Your real school are with you. But you have to go back to your school. Or maybe when your friend goes, you can ask your friend, oh, which place did they post me to? Okay, you were posted to KNUST. Me, a cry girl, you have to go back to KNUST and go and now ask them, so what do I have to do? And now you have to go and print yourself from a cafe. And after you print it, 
we took it back to our school, KNUST. Then we went to Q in front of my then dean of students. He signed everybody's own. We all walked straight to his former office, the regional office at Asante region. After they signed for us, we went back to KNUST. We went to sign again. Then we went back to, that time there was no Ophori Chrome office. The only office was the KMA office. So I went there and I went to give it to them. That time Mr. Arjun was the KMA boss. And then I had a boss, the boss of the place. Oh, I've forgotten this man's name, Mr. Kwenu. You know what my, later he became my staff. Let me tell you that what the man did to me. So I go to this man one day. Our allowance had delayed a bit. And I said, oh, sir, so please, you know, I call out which we can crap. So you see, our allowance is delayed so much. Can we have our money? We, we, we wait. And the man says, put the paper down. I didn't hear. Say, please, why should I put the paper? Said mine. <laughs> Fast forward. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, uh, who here is doing that? <laughs> you know, do you know, after he did this to me in 2010, he didn't know, seven years later, I became his boss. The first time he entered my office and I looked at him, and he came to talk to me. <laughs> when he asked me a question, I also said, <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, when I did this, he still couldn't get it. And I was like, Mr. Quenu, do you remember that stubborn little girl <laughs> who used to harass you in 2010? Said, Huh, mommy. When you, Papa. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so I keep, I keep saying to people, <laughs> why we treat all of you well is because one day, who knows, you may be the president of Ghana that I may have to serve under. Maupua, who be a president, na me, na me do. And these things, they happen. So please, the people you meet whilst you move, treat them well. I don't think Mr. Kweru thought I was going to become his boss one day. And you know, the painful side was that the seven years later, I was just 29 and I was his boss. <laughs> I said, no. Oh, boy, I didn't cry, boss. <laughs> Can we move? <laughs> so you are going to go on www.nss.gov.gh. Like they said, this is the enrollment system. They will teach you how to do it. We always advise you use your own laptop in trying to register yourself, or even your phone, because it's very mobile friendly. Now, when you go to the cafes and you leave your details there, what happens is that these cafes sometimes will pick your details and they will trade you to someone. So by the time you are going to enroll, you realize that someone already has enrolled you, or the person has your details they can use. And don't forget that now we are using the Ghana card, which prevents a lot of crimes. So somebody can also pick your details and use it for anything wrong. So please, if ever you use a cafe or any computer that belongs to many people, make sure you log off fully before you leave the space. Are we good? Next one. Then posting registration. These ones, my colleague will pick it up and then they will tell you all the details of what you're supposed to do. Like I said, we all know our date of births. <clears throat> a lot of us forget how to write our date of births when it's twisted. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> My brother. No, him. You know, when we are told to write our date of birth like, I am a 4th of July 1986, it's easy for me to do. But if ever I go to meet July 4th, 1986, possibility of making a mistake is very high. 
Because in my thoughts, the way I write it as a Ghanaian is the 4th July, 1986. So when you are registering, be very careful about your date of birth. Be sure what and the way you are being asked to put your date of birth. Are you good? So do not just think that because they said it's date of birth, you are going to start writing anything. You may make a mistake. That's why I said you may think you know your date of birth until you are asked to fill a form where they have twisted it. Because if you are a Presbyterian, you are tempted to write your name as Oware Mensa Gifty. If you went to any school, you are tempted to say you are Gifty Oware Mensa. But most of the time, when we are filling forms, they ask us surname. They will ask us what name? First name. Sometimes even middle name. Before, So you are just supposed to be cautious when you are doing it. Now, at national service, we do not temper with these things I'm going to speak of. So anytime you see there is any wrong in any of them, come back to your school and ask them. One, the way you write your name, we do not temper with it. It can't just as the school will be. It will be the same as what will be on your certificate when you are completing school. Two, the course you offered whilst you were here. So any course, you, the degree you are obtaining, we write it just as the degree had been given to us by your school. Your date of birth, your date of birth, which happens to be your personal date of birth you gave your school, is the same thing the school produces to us. So when it is time for you to also register, you must produce back to us that same detail. If by any reason you are like me, and after marriage, your name changed from the Abuaji to Mensa like mine, you are supposed to get an affidavit Come to your school, your school will endorse and you bring it to us. You know, unless you gazette your name and you have the people that says that I have changed my name, you cannot just walk to us and say, okay, I'm married. Since I got married, I've decided to change my name. Can you change my name for me? So you have to go through all the processes your school has. And when the school think they have allowed you to change your name, the school will officially write to national service and will make the changes. Apart from that, we do not temper with any of these things. Do not come to us. If ever your school also did not bring you on the list, and then it's registration time, all you need to do is to speak to your school. Your school has a portal they share with us. They will input your details, and you can be able to see your thing. When it is time for you to register, we open the portal. We issue statements. We speak of it in the radio, on the TV, everywhere. And then you also receive an alert that tells you that it's time for you to register. When you are registering, can I take the next one? When you are registering, this download and other things, when he's talking, you talk about those forms. But then these are the forms you're supposed to go through it. We have one we call the monthly assessment. Monthly assessment is what we use to pay you. Without it, you can't be paid. The annual assessment form is what you are supposed to fill before you complete service. Most of these fill forms come mostly Let's say if you're doing the thing in September, it will come around June, where it is open and you're supposed to fill your part, give it to your agency for them to also endorse for you. It's more of a referral and a testimonial between you and us. So mostly keep a copy of that because when you are applying for any job, you can attach it. Because it's a testimonial from really whoever your supervisor is. And then you can send it to national service. Like I told you the last time, when I said, you remember when I spoke about steady leave? I said steady leaves will pay something small to national service. You remember? Good. They pay a 10% of whatever allowance we are paying to national service. The private agencies that will pick you and be paying you from their COFEX, they pay national service 20%. And also, if you are enrolled in any of the public sector, we pay you your allowance. Next one. 717, yeah? The allowance of 117. 715.57. Do you know when you do 0.57 in 12 hours? I don't know how much it is. Welfare, 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 welfare. A lot of you here are political beings. You would want to belong to, you all belong to NASPA the day you become a national service personnel. People keep asking us, and when you come, People will begin to tease your mind and say, oh, take it to court and prove. Are you a NASPA person? You're a NASPA person, whether you like it or not. 
me I've been a NASPA person, you they don't want to be a NASPA person. They took my money, they will take yours too. So all of us, they will take our money. So NASPA, what will happen is some of you will want to contest for the NASPA leadership. It's fair. But please, when you are coming in, make sure that you have an NHIA card. The reason is very simple. When you get sick, you must be taken care of. Then there are a few accidents that people go through when they are doing their service. Not to scare you, but for instance, I had a young man who was doing service with MTN, 2000 and I think 19. He went on the mask. There was something he wasn't supposed to touch. Then he saw a engineer for Frauaba. He went to do it and his fingers were off. Good thing is that because MTN puts their people on the mask insurance. He's been taking care of all this well. What name for him? Or a lazy boy and put your own maybe. Because they are going to pay him for the rest of his life. And obvious, being a degree civil server, civil engineer, he's only supposed to go and sit down and be ordering people around. But at least he was taking care of. But most of the time, when we work at places, even for all Ghanaian workers, including even your professors here, we are not giving much to protect us. So you first have to protect yourself. And in protecting yourself, like I said, the NHI is key. There are a few insurances that come around to register some of you. It's not compulsory. You decide to do it or not. If you don't, they can't beat you. If they beat you, beat them back. If you're a man like them, they will arrest you. If you are not, you go home. But if they come, you can decide to. Now, deaths come. As you are in an echo, you know this is an echo city. You know the university is an echo city. You know? You don't know? Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody is doing sociology here. <laughs> so if you do sociology, then you know. And I think even economics should also know what an echo city and an ecosystem is. So this is an echo city. Because we are from many places and we've come together, there is a possibility that someone died among us and we didn't even hear. That same way, we are going to post about 150,000 of you or more. There is a possibility that one person may die, but it shouldn't be from your school. Hey, by you people, you are the ones who gave me broken heart. Too. <laughs> so, anything can happen. Now, this is the national service rule. If by any means, and as you are going to register, you will see the things they will be asking you guys for. One of it is to be asking you for your nest of kin. A lot of you will put your lovers and your friends there. If any good thing happens to you whilst you are doing your service, or if any bad thing also happens to you whilst you are doing your service, the nest of kin is the one we are supposed to connect to. Now, if by any reason you die, you sleep, and you don't wake up early, and you are still sleeping after about three months, and we know you are sleeping and you will not wake up again, what we have to do is to give the rest of your allowance to your family for them to invest into someone who can become like you. Now, all these things will have to go to your nest of kin. So when you are registering for the nest of kin, think well who your nest of kin to be. Because I have seen a young girl die. We called nest of kin. It went to a young gentleman who says that, oh, I used to know her when we were in school. I don't know where even she is again. Unfortunately, this girl's family will never get the money. And in my system, after the year, money rolls back to government. So what I say? But if she had placed mother, father, siblings, whoever, we could have been able to connect to her. So please, your nest of kin is key. And your nest of kin means when you are not alive. Who would you want to inherit you? Can we go? There is something we call the inclusion desk. The inclusion desk is for both you and I. When I say both you and I, I mean the male and the female. What is it for to do for all of us is to be able to protect the vulnerable. When I talk of vulnerable, anybody that feels weak at any moment. Why I use myself as the example was because at the point you are coming to do your service, anything can happen. Some of you, especially the ladies, when they are posted to banks, and then they, see, they go and they say, the place is full. Say, boss, please, 
You keep me here. I'll do anything you ask me to do. The anything you ask me to do could be anything. But you see, if anybody harasses you in your process right from the beginning of when you start registering till the day you are done with your service, the inclusion desk is a desk that is supposed to be of privacy and confidentiality. Go there, report the person. And when you report the person, we will deal with the person. But you see, just like some of you are here, including that young lady who was with the first Atlantic Bank thing. I tell people, now the case has been done, so we can say it. <laughs> the issue of that young lady, eh? You know, I keep saying it, that unless, especially for the sons of Adam, you know sons of Adam? Unless they go through a mess, they don't think. The young lady had an issue first. It was brought to our attention at National Service. We reacted on it. We wrote a letter to First Atlantic Bank. All they were supposed to have done was to have seen to it. She wouldn't have been a nuisance on them. Because the reality was, it was her rather who was a nuisance. Because the HR had written twice. But typical human being, because that thing is sweeting me, he forgot that there is a problem on the girl. And look at where this whole thing had ended. He's brought into jeopardy his doctor wife who had done nothing wrong. And people were insulting the woman rather who had done nothing. So please, some of you, when you go to do service, instead of allowing the men to rather seduce you, you rather go to seduce the men. It is also wrong. Because when they write to us, we'll repost you. And most of the time, I keep saying, the best way to post people like that is to take them to the primary schools and the kindergartens. Because you see, because, hold on. <laughs> there, there, there will be pedophiles. first. <laughs> you know, a lot of the time, see, doing, doing this whole thing for eight years, I come to appreciate what the man will do and what the woman to do. Most of the time, when a lot of you young people here are desperate, you go to bargain for things you were not ready for. So one time, yes, I said you should do it with me. Two times, yes, I did. Then later you got to know that the guy who gave you that opportunity is not a boss. So you see there is another boss. Ah, I know where you used to me. Okay, I don't want you again, but I want another person. If the guy says I won't leave, the girl reports him. So when issues like that come to national service on the inclusion desk, we are not stupid. We don't just sit and say because she's beautiful and we think that she should not be harassed, you harass them. No, we sit on the issue. So often than not, you realize that both of these two people may be culpable. It's only a few points you see some sons of Adam there. They are just devils. But mostly, we as young people must know at national service, reposting is free. Reposting is not a crime. Reposting is accepted. If I was posted to Sunyani, and I don't want the place I was posted to, and I go back to the office and say, can you repost me? They would repost me if I have a reason. Do not let anybody take a dime from you to repost you or to post you. If you pay anything to anybody, you are as a criminal as the one that received the money. And when they are arrested, you also be arrested. That's the question they are saying. A lot of people, morons who create WhatsApp pages, Telegraph pages, Facebook pages, they call themselves bullshits. And they will try to get money from you. If you are foolish and you have so much, you can give them. And it's free. They would spend it. It's not to national service. We won't care about you. We are gone. What happened is that if you are posted and you do not like the place you were posted to for any reason whatsoever, my dears, please walk to the national service 
office, any of the regional office they are registering, speak to the regional director. At least, it's very possible you'll be heard and you'll be reposted. I've had to repost young ladies who had come to me to say, one of them that I keep saying and people make jokes about is the fact that a girl came and said she was posted to a very beautiful place in Accra. One of the best places you can think about. This girl just came and said, you see, madam, me, I don't want to be in Accra. Oh, me, I want to go to Atuabo. That's the only place I want to go and do. I don't care if I have to go and do even teaching. It's fine. It's okay. I'm like, young lady, a lot of people want to be posted to where you've been posted to. He says, no, my boyfriend is there. He says, if I don't come, he will leave me. Yes, we reposted her there. But at national service, we do not break relationships. We do not break friendships. Hey, the way, you know, you know, this general area. You know, this general area. There is a guy and a girl. The girl has something in her ears. Yeah. And the guy is just sitting down and pretending he's not seeing us. And you know when I said we don't break relationships, all the people there started clapping for the two of them. <laughs> so please, if you have to do any posting, it is done. Now, most of the time, we have the inclusion has something to do with the Ghana AIDS Commission. When you are posted, they give you condoms. The condoms are for sex, not for keeping at home. If you want to become like me when I was doing my service, abstain. If you do not want to abstain and you are going, protect yourself. They've not brought us the latest HIV resource and the research. But the last one they did, they said people who had lived up north, the three northern regions, those times, between one year and two years. And the one year were you, the National Service Personnel, and the two years was the YEA project they were running. They were the ones who were spreading the STIs. So we beg you, the ones you were able to afford and acquire in Cape Coast, keep it here. When you are coming to do service, the condoms we are going to give you, if you ever want to try it, protect yourself. And most of you guys, <laughs> hello, and most of you young men, when you go to the villages and you think you are the only hero on that land <laughs> and you want to go and have sex anyhow, if you go and the young lady says, this one, I won't allow you, please. Put your thing inside your pants and walk away. Anything can happen. Maybe one day when we have time and we meet again, I'll tell you of a story of a guy who the lady says, no, don't touch me. And the guy says, ah, you, you've made me hurt. I've been holding you. Let me touch you. The lady says, no, don't bring your thing into my thing. Let's just do what we are doing. The guy says, no. Then the lady says, bring a broom. So the guy went to bring a stick. She entered the stick into herself. In less than three minutes, when she took the stick out, the stick started dying. You know what had happened? So she lives in a village where they betroth. And you'll be amazed that even in Ghana, in this era, they still betroth people. People who come from the north will tell you. People who come from the Sashi area will tell you. You'll be amazed. <laughs> but hello. Hello? Hello? But who, who, who was, but you people, why, why? <laughs> we, are, we are talking about betrothing and you will bring God's betrothed on the screen. Right, so just as you gave me all the attention, my colleague will be coming to take you through. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Sanka, who named your baby take you through now? Anka, my head. Who named my baby? So when you are here, you know, baby, any year. 
Now say, who could have mistake? You know how beautiful we are here? And how we are playing here? When you come to the headquarters, wow. Well, <laughs> when you come to the headquarters to come and see us, you won't have it like this. So please, listen to him. He's going to wrap up very fast. And then we can be able to ask all the questions you have. And we'll close you right now. Yeah? So please, who is doing that one? Oh. He's really my best friend in the office, you know. Thank you. Good morning. I'll be taking you briefly through the process where you can acquire your PIN code, how you can go about doing the online registration, and then later how you can access your posting. But then fortunately for me, the Deputy Executive Director has already touched on a lot of things. So I'll just be brief and then be touching on one or two things as we go along. Okay. Right. So I just want to inform you that after his presentation, there'll be a last one on financial matters. And then there'll be an um, opportunity for you to ask questions. So let's note down our questions. When they are done, there'll be question and answer segment. Thank you. Okay, so to do all that I've said so far, you need to go to the NSS website. So you go to www.nss.gov.gh, nss.gov.gh. When you go to the website, the first thing you need to do is to check for PIN code. So you click on the Get PIN Code button, which is the red button that you see. When you click on the Get PIN Code button, you are required to enter your student's ID number, your student's index number, and your date of birth. As my madam said, this information has already or will be provided by the school. And then it's what they provide that we are requesting you to enter. So with the date of birth, it is what the school provides that we request you to enter here. When you enter the details, the PIN code is automatically generated for you. All you need to do is to activate it. And then by activation, you need to pay an amount, either using the bank option or the mobile money option. Hello. Hello. So currently, they are paying 40 CD if you are using the bank option, and then 41 CD if you are using the mobile money option. But then, you should know that if you don't pay or if you don't activate the PIN code, you can't proceed to register. And then if you don't register, you can't be posted. Once you do the payment for the PIN code, you can then proceed to register. You can acquire the PIN code and then do the online registration all at the same time, at the same setting. All you need to do is to make the activation early, and then you proceed to the registration. Again, with the registration, you need to go to the NSS website. So again, go to www.nss.gov.gh. Sometimes take the www off. Yes, nss.gov.gh will take you to the place. When you go to the website, you click on online registration. Online registration. When you click on online registration, you are again required to enter your index number, the date of birth, and the PIN code you paid for. So in this case, as I said, if you don't make payments, you can't proceed. Once you make payments, you are taken to the first stage of the registration. The registration comes in five stages. And then with the five stages, you just need to read, understand, and then provide the necessary answers. So at one sitting, you can do all within five to ten minutes. That is the registration. You first need to identify yourself. We need to know that indeed you are the right person registering. That is the first stage of the registration. So you are taken to the means of identification page. And then currently we are using the ECOWAS card or the Ghana card as the means of identification. So you need to select the Ghana card and then proceed to provide the number of the card. 
the system will cross check to ensure that your name on your card tallies with the name the school sent. If the names are not tallying, it means you can't proceed to the next stage. And then that will mean you have to come with, to our office for us to help you out. But then if your name is tally, you can then proceed to the next stage, which is the personnel info page. The personnel info page deals with you submitting your details. So we want your residential address, your guardian information, next of kin information, your contact information, that is the email address and phone number, which is very important because we will be sending messages across. After the personnel info page, you are taken to the, sorry, you are required to select your marital status too. And then mostly for the ladies, we consider that when you are doing the posting. So if you are married, mostly we don't take you far from home. But like I said, it's mostly for the ladies. <laughs> After the personal info page, you are taken to the employment registry page. For those who are already working, those who with same steady leavers, this is where you indicate that you're already working so that we post you back to where you are working. But then you need to prove that indeed you are working there. If you have any health condition, you also indicate under the employment history page. And then like we said, pregnancy is termed a health condition to us. So if you are pregnant, you also don't take you far from home. After the employment history page, you are taken to the preference page. And then the preference page deals with you selecting three regions in the order that you like to do the service. You cannot select one region three times. Greater Accra, greater Accra, greater Accra. We wouldn't allow. What we do is, once you select it in the first option, the system takes the region you have selected off for you to select two other regions. So when you go to the second option, you won't see the first region you selected there. You also let us know the local and then foreign languages you can read, write, and speak, as well as the models, that is the industrial preference. We have the education support, the health support, the agri and agro-business, urban traffic, public administration, private sector, you are required to select two of these models. That also influence our postings. And then we have what we term the pedagogy. So you will be asked if you want to enroll or be taught through the, uh, taken through the pedagogy training. That is the last stage of the preference page. When you are done with the preference, you are taken to the preview. And then the preview page deals with you going through all the information you yourself provided. Ensure that everything is correct, and then you save. Once you save at the preview page, you can't go back and do corrections. So make sure everything is correct before you save. When you save at the preview page, you then get the NSS number, which is different from the PIN code. We have the NSS pin code and then we have the NSS number. The NSS number is what we will use to identify you as a service personnel throughout your service period. You have the option of going to your personnel dashboard and then the personnel dashboard is like your Instagram or your Facebook page. So anything to do with NSS, digitization, you also have to do it on your dashboard. Are we clear? Once you are done with the registration, and then let's say a month or two, you hear that postings are released. There, there, there will then be the press release, and then we will also send SMS to you, stating that you've been posted to a particular organization, and then you will follow the link attached to the SMS to view your posting. But should in case you don't get the SMS or you don't see the press release, what you need to do is to go back to the NSS website, Click on NSS portal. When you click on NSS portal, as the arrow shows, when you click on NSS portal, you are required to sign in as a personnel. And then by signing in as a personnel, you have to enter your email address and then password. The email address is the same one you entered whilst you were doing the online registration. And then the password is the NSS pin code. Once you enter these login details, 
the system will automatically ask you to change the password. So you have to change it from the PIN code to anything you want to use. It can be a name, it can be a number, anything unique to you, which no one will have access to. Once you change the password, you then have access to the NSS dashboard. And then since you are printing your posting letter, go to the bottom of the page, you see print posting letter. You click on the print posting letter, and then you print the appointment letter as well. It should be like five pages in all. Print all the five pages. Why I'm saying print all the five pages is because on the fifth page of the appointment letter, it has the instructions or the flowchart on what you need to do next after you're done with the printing. And then what you need to do is to take the letter or the appointment letter to the organization, the facility, or the institution you've been posted to for them to endorse. By endorsing, they either accept or they decline you. Yes, they either accept or decline you based on their own preference. Whichever one it is, go back to your dashboard, book an appointment. And then the essence of the booking of appointments is to let the NSS office know that you'll be coming to them on this very day at this very time, whilst you also get to know the venue and then location you need to go for the regional registration. So the NSS office gets to know you are coming to them, and then you also get to know where you need to go to do the regional registration. So after booking the appointments, on the date you've booked for the appointment, you go to the NSS office and then you do your regional registration. But then in going, you go with your Ghana card or the ECOWAS card because they would need to check it before you are registered. Are we clear? I know it gets confusing when it's with the posting registration. Go to your NSS dashboard. So you first go to the NSS website, click on sign in as personnel, and then you sign in using your login details, which is your email address and then the PIN code. And then after you change the PIN code to anything you want to use, then you scroll to the bottom of the page, click on print posting letter, which should be like five pages, print all five pages, take it to where you've been posted to for them to endorse the letter. After you go to your dashboard and then you book an appointment, and then on the date that you book for the appointment, you go to the NSS registration center to register. Are we clear? Is it clear? If it's still not clear, like I said, the fifth page of the appointment letter comes with the instructions on what you need to do next after you're done with the printing. So everything I've said after the printing is there for you to remember. Hope you are clear now. Since you are clear on that, I will just hand over to the account officer to take you to the account section. Thank you. Hello. Uh, this is the final presentation. Uh, please, can you give me your ear? Because I don't want you to face challenges while you are doing your service. Uh, national service, our payments are based on our postings. As my executive director said, when you are posted based on uh, employed NSP, that is the leave category. Safety category are those people who are already working back to school to do a top up program. When that happens, National Service will post you back to your place of work, but you're not going to receive any allowance whilst you're doing your service. But the only thing is, you are going to pay National Service 10%. So currently, National Service are paying our personnel 715.77. 715.57. So we work the 10% on the 715.57. Then you pay that money to national service either after, after every month or quarterly or end of the service year. The moment you refuse to pay this money to national service after you are done with your service, I mean, whilst you are working, we won't give you any national service certificate because we are owing national service. Yes, that money must pay to national service. The moment you refuse to pay national, that money to national service, you won't receive any allowance. But please note that 10% is not work on your salary. It's work on the allowance you are giving to our personnel currently, the 715.75. That's the first category, that is the leave auction. And also, those people will be posted to non subvented As my boss said, the non subvented are those posted to the Crystal government. That was the uh, Ghana Water, ECG, SNIT, Cocoa Board, 
banks, those private sectors. When we post personnel to those sector, national service won't pay you any allowance. Those companies are supposed to pay you your allowance monthly, every month. And they're supposed to pay you the 715 or more. They shouldn't pay you less than the 715 you are giving to our personnel. If any company picks you and they are paying you that, they are paying lesser than the 715, kindly report to our regional office so that we do reposting for you. And also, most of the times, those will likely be posted to the mining sectors. When you are lucky, those people, they pay them in dollars. So for example, those posted to the mining sector in Duncan uh, Pesos Mines, they pay them $200 every month. So if you are lucky, you are posted up sex sector, you will be happy and enjoy your allowance. Yes. And also, uh, hello. Hello. And whilst they are paying your allowance to you every month, they can decide to pay to you either at the office or with your bank account. While they're paying the allowance to us well, they're supposed to pay national service 20% on your behalf to national service. The 20% is not work on your allowance. Those private companies, they are away. So don't worry yourself. But the only thing you have to do as a personnel is make sure every month ask the HR or the accountant in, the, in that particular bank or that particular uh, private sector that have you paid my 20% to national service? When they also refuse to pay the 20% to national service, you also refuse to give your service certificate. But national service, you know, you post it to place that we know that they will pay the 20% for you every month. That's the second category. And the last category is those we are going to pay that the sovereignty category. The sovereignty categories are those posted to the government schools, government hospitals, government offices. When we post to those sectors, we are going to pay you allowance, 715. The 715, before you can enjoy the 715, is to, you have to do two things. Firstly, you are supposed to have a monthly duty form. The monthly duty form will appear on your portal. Then you print that monthly form every 15th of every month. National service, our account can start from 15th of every month. So, for example, today is what? 15th of May. That's the beginning of our account for national service. It will end in June, 15th June. That's how our account works. So you have you print this form. Please, can you show me the form? You print the form from your portal. Everything of every month. Next. Next. Hi, this is the form. That's what you print from your portal. On this form, the only thing you do is you only sign. You give it to your supervisor to endorse for you. Then you submit this form to our office. So for example, if you're posted to UCC here to do your service here, you print the form, you give it to your supervisor, your supervisor will give it to you back. Then you go to our office at Cape Coast Metro to submit the form there. When you go there, they are going to do, you are going to use a metric device to capture you, to know whether you are the person coming to do the submission. If it's, if it's not you, we can't capture you. So you go there with the form. When you are done, you go back to your place of work. But the allowance, before you can receive allowance, we, at first we are paying our personnel through the issuish platform and because we are moving to the we are we are moving on well national service have moved from east Ridge now to ghana pay mobile money yeah this is faster than the east Ridge. so we started with the degree nurses as it stands now we are doing the nurses registration we are going to pay our degree nurses with the ghana pay platform and when we put also down with, we put also down with your school but to do your service we are also going to use the same platform to pay you and one thing is the Ghana paid mobile money system is like this. The number you're going to use to register for national service, please, that number, use that same number to register for the Ghana paid. Because we're going to use that same number on our system to pay you. We're going to use that, we're going to pay you through that number. So if we, if in case you change, if in case, whilst you're doing the online registration, you use a different number, and use a different number to do the Ghana paid, it's going to worry your payment structure. So please make sure the number you're going to use, your number you're going to use to do your registration on your on our NSS portal. Use that same number to do the Ghana paid registration. Somebody asks, what is Ghana paid? Ghana paid is like the mo normal mobile money service we are doing, the empty mobile money. But this one, it connects with what banks. So when you're doing your registration at the registration center, we will bring some banks to come to the registration center to help to help you do the Ghana. 
to, I mean, to do register for the Ghana paid. But you can register the Ghana paid with your own phone. Just go to the Google Play Store or the App Store, download Ghana paid, the app, and register. When you register, we ask you which bank are you working with. You enter the bank's account number and everything. Then within some few minutes, you are being registered on the Ghana paid. But if you can't do it, relax here. When we are being posted to do your service, when you go to National Service Registration Center, there are some banks the scheme will bring to our registration center to help you do the Ghana paid uh, main platform. So on that note, I'll end here for questions and answers. Thank you very much. Hello. Oh, a better round of applause for him. And to all our resource persons so far for the presentations that they've done. Our last presenter spoke about eSwish and uh, Ghana Pay, if I heard him right. Okay, so fortunately for us, there's a team from CBG that will want to throw more light on that. So we'll give them some few minutes for that, and then we'll take our questions. Thank you very much. Um, Director, thank you very much for this opportunity. Hello, everybody. My name is Gabriel. Um, can I do away with this? Okay. So, my name is Gabriel Debord. I'm from Consolidated Bank Ghana. I came here with my colleague, Fatola Soya. Most of us here, or some of us here, would not know about CBG. So, I'll just give you something brief about CBG, and then we'll talk about money. Because I don't want to bore you so much with, with CBG, but... Um, CBG is a Ghanaian bank that was established by the Bank of Ghana or the government of Ghana. <laughs> On the 1st of August 2018, CBG comprised of seven banks that the government decided to put us together and gave us about 9 billion Ghana cities to operate with. I'm here today to talk to you about our two accounts and then I'll link it to our famous Ghana Pay that um, NSS is enrolling us on. And I think it's a, it's a very good initiative moving to Ghana Pay because the ease which most of the banks had issues with the payment portal. So um, thank you very much, Mr. Director, for doing that. So first of all, I'll talk about our classic savings accounts because um, now we are no longer students. Agreed? We are no longer students. We are ready for the job market. Okay. All right. So... Um, I'll just talk a little because there'll be another um, opportunity to speak about the accounts. So with Ghana Pay, it's, it's a payment or it's a remittance platform that um, Bank of Ghana brought about in connection with the banks. So with this Ghana Pay, your money sits with the banks. It doesn't sit with the telcos. <laughs> the money sits with the banks and not the telcos. So if you download the app on Google Play Store or iOS, you select Consolidated Bank. Your money stays with Consolidated Bank. Any transaction you do, there's no commission charge. But there's a charge of e-levy on Ghana Pay. E-levy because we all have to help to build the, 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 the country Ghana. So um, let's, let's all put ourselves together Let's make sure that we are all on that platform. And at a better forum, I'll come and I'll educate you on what CBG stands to give to you and what you also stand to gain from CBG. Thank you very much. Right. So maybe to add to that, on campus, we can locate CBG at Casford. Yeah, close to Cassidy Hereford Hall. Right. So it's now time for us to ask any questions make recommendations or suggestions to the National Service Scheme. Um, opportunity for the first five, because the next session is starting at 12. So the first five students, if you are ready with your questions, kindly line up on my left-hand side, the first five. On the overview of the National Service Scheme, the financial aspects, and the online registration and posting. First five, first five.
So let's know your name and then you go straight to the question. Please, I'm Kobe Abigail. Thank you very much for the presentation. Please, in the course of my educational journey, I was there with my parents, so I happened to add a middle name that my parents didn't add while doing my birth set, which I use for my Ghana card. Please, would that affect me when I'm entering my student ID and then my Ghana card name? Um, so I was with my parents in the course of my educational journey. So I added a middle name that my dad didn't add. Okay, so please, I'm um, Aisha Said I'm for. And um, please, when the second speaker was speaking, he said that after printing, after the registration and printing all the forms, you have to send it to where you were posted for um, confirmation or decline. So what if I take my forms to the company or where I was posted and then they decline it? What do I do next? Okay, please, um, Christian Shamino. My question well, is similar to the first lady's question. And it has to do with the fact that um, all my academic years, I have one particular name, and it's different from the Ghana card name. So I wanted to know if I have to go through the same process of um, making an affidavit before I can use the Ghana card name. Is there's a middle name attached to the Ghana card name, so thank you. All right, my name is Abladi. Say that you, had, you did your internship somewhere, and the, Abladi, Abladi, yeah. You did your internship somewhere, and the people want you to come and have your service there. Is there a process? What is the process you have to go through? Yeah, so my question is on the salary that we receive. Yeah, the allowance. Yeah, so please, on, on what basis is that amount generated? Because on what basis is that allowance generated? Yeah. Yeah, so I think there are reasons to why we are given that amount, right? And so what are those reasons? Because, yeah. No, 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 that very amount that we are receiving, that's 715. Um, the last person. Madam, how many have you taken so far? Seven. So, I think the last one. Yeah, uh -huh. so when we are done with this, we just dissolve it and we go. Mm. Okay, my name is Roxen Adamno. I will become accountant. Okay. And um, please, my question is very simple. Please, what's the motive behind the national service? Okay. I'm asking that because um, I've gone to do my internship in two assemblies. And the offices have been going to make, the first of all was sent to revenue office. But then you go to revenue office and you realize that somebody read economics. And the person is there. And the person is not doing anything. So please. Hello. Hello? 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 One, one meeting, one meeting. Abigail. So both Abigail and uh, the number three. I think your your your. You know when you when you put the East West card vis a vis. Sorry, the Ghana card vis a vis 
the national service system. It has a rating it gives you in terms of compatibility. So whatever details that you had sent to your school, which you have inputted, and then the card, it will tell you the level of similarities in all of it. So having a middle name, because I have certificates that often do not have my middle name. And I have, I think my Ghana card has all my name, including my middle name. Gifty Oware Abuaje is the same as Gifty Ifia Oware Abuaje, depending on where I am using it. Most of the time, if it was full change of name, then I am supposed to go seek for clarity of it. So when you do it with our system, like I said, we don't temper with names. So as far as there are names in there, and it's biometric, so it picks your fingerprint and then your face. So it's fine. Why? So madam, I think I've answered that one. Then somebody asks about, oh, when you are declined, if you had listened to me, I had said that when you go and they say go for reposting, there are many times you come will repost you. So I don't know if it's the English or semantics, but then declining is just a point of going back to reposting. So if by any reason you go and they say they cannot get you, come back to our office and repost you. And we will post you to a company in the same district, in the same region. You get it. So do not be worried about reposting. The, until the last person gets to be posted and accepted, national service job do not finish. Then, somebody asks, what if I did an internship with a company and they want to get me? If really the company is a company, then they know the process national service goes through to ask for national service personnel. One. Two, if they've never ever taken national service personnel before, their company is supposed to officially write to national service for us to authenticate them in our system and know that their company registered in Ghana, paid their taxes, that can pay you, then will repost you. So they will ask of you from us with all your details. And the only detail we know you by national service is your NSS number. So that company can only request of you from us when you are done registering. And then I had a very, which other one? Somebody asked me, what's the reason for the allowance? What's the, ra I think the word you want to say was rational. But even if it's rational, what was the rational? What's the rationale behind us paying school fees? It's because we are coming here to learn. Oh. So the, the rationale behind being given the money you are given is because you are doing your service. I don't know if that's what he wanted us to say. How do you say? Is what? Is what? Is what? We should bring it down. I can't hear you. I don't know what is the question. All right, so national service allowance that I worked, that I, I was paid was a 250. It moved from 250 to 350 for the for almost 10 years. And in 2017, we moved it to 500, 559. And then it moved from 559 to 715 in recent times. All right. Then another man, where is the man who the becomes man? Where is he? Should I answer him as a lecturer or I answer him as his friend? As his friend. Then I'll teach you something today. You know, I tell somebody you know what Ghana we are suffering from? The fact that sometimes we think we know, but we don't. I am expecting somebody who is maybe, excuse my French, who is learning French, who did sociology, to ask the question he did. This is a become graduate. Asking us if economics is good for a GRA office.
Do I have to still answer him? Do, should I answer him? Should I? Should I? I should not answer him. Okay, so this is how I will answer the question. National service, hello? National service still take into consideration the courses we offered. Two, when, for instance, if a company is asking me for accounting staff, accounting students, and all the accounting people from UCC, we've posted. We've posted all those from UG, from everywhere else. We go to the next closest in line. When we are done with economics, we may even go to math. When we are done with math, sometimes we go to statistics. If, for instance, an insurance company wants actuarial science people, and we are done with actuarial science, the next in line will be which course? Which one? Statistics. When we are done, we have to do math, because what they do there is in line. If, for instance, a hospital says that we want someone to help with our pathology department, we know that as service personnel, all they need you to do is to go and write the autopsy reports for them. So when we are posting, I will not post anybody who has done economics there. I would rather post someone who did English, somebody who did literature, someone who read, let's say, history, somebody who read something that is able to write. So if I have an LLB, whether you like it or not, if, as far as you are not a lawyer, we will post you to a place where you can write English. Are we good? So that impression that, oh, national service people do not post people to places, is not true. Now, when I post people to the various departments, they have the rights. For instance, if we post 2,000 people to, let's say, a hospital, the hospital has the right to say that, per this course that you did, we want you to work in this department. It, I don't post people to specific departments. We post people to agencies. And the agencies in their own structure. Because when you go to places and you look out for who the, for instance, corporate affairs boss is, corporate affairs is assumed as an HR thing. But in many companies, the corporate affairs boss is a lawyer. So obvious, you may be working under a lawyer, though you are HR, but if the person sees you have a little of office management, they will push you into corporate affairs. Are we good? One. Two, corporate, what we do with national services, the one year you are going to do your service is seen as one year of work until 2017. When we were able to achieve this with the Labor Commission, any service we are doing was seen as a voluntary system and you could not put it on your CV. But now, if I am done with service and I have never worked, you cannot say that because officially I have not been given a letter. That letter you are giving during your process you do is your letter. Are we good? Somebody also asks if we are signed. If you go to a place to sign. Oh, I've, I've addressed that. Okay, guys. So thank you so much, madam, for being here with us. We would be glad to have you come very soon when you are done fully with your school to come in and do your service last year we had to hold on with their school for so long because you you were one of the last to complete school last two years to where you were one of the last you were almost the last to complete school this year we are praying that ucc will be able to complete school very early <laughs> so we can be able to do our postings quite early so thank you so much on behalf of my regional director mr opoku mensa my staff, everybody from Accra, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. See you guys very soon. Oh, a better round of applause for Madam and his team from the National Service Secretariat. So on behalf of UCC management, we also want to say thank you. Please take note, because students for the next session are using the back door to this venue, can you use the entrance to my right and left and exit? Thank you very much for your attention this morning.